Greetings, students. Today our lecture is dedicated to osteomyelitis and osteoradionecrosis of jaws. It's a very important subject in our field. So as introduction, uh, the word itself, osteomyelitis, originates from the ancient Greek words, yeah? So we have osteon as bone and we have myelinus as marrow. An inflammation process of the entire bone, including the cortex and the periosteum, recognizing that the pathological process is rarely confined to the endosteum. As definition, we have our osteomyelitis is considered as an inflammatory condition of bone that usually begins as an infection of the medullary cavity, rapidly involves the Haversian system and quickly extends to periosteum of that area. Predisposing factors. Fracture due to trauma and road traffic accidents could be gunshot wounds, radiation damage, Paget's disease, osteoporosis, or it could be systemic disease as malnutrition, acute leukemia, uncontrolled diabetes, sickle cell anemia, and chronic alcoholism. Osteomyelitis is initiated by a contiguous focus of infection of the jaw, of course, or hematogenous spread, mostly in children. And we have to say that clinical cases of osteomyelitis of mandible is much more, much often, yeah? So it happens more often than osteomyelitis of maxilla. Pathogenesis. We have acute inflammation following infection. Then we go to hyperemia, then capillary permeability and infiltration of granular seeds. Tissues necrosis, destruction of bacteria, vascular thrombosis, and pulse forms. Intramedullary pressure as pure accumulates anesthesia compression, vascular collapse, venous stasis, and ischemia. This accumulates with stripping of periosteum. Then we have muscular supply reduced, periosteum penetration and mucosal fistulas, chronic inflammation, granulation tissue and lysis of bone, separation of necrosis bone, we call that sequestra, and set of newborn in volucrum. Microbiology of osteomyelitis. Osteomyelitis of jaw now is recognized as a disease caused primarily by alpha hemolytic streptococci, peptostreptococcus, porphyromonas, fusobacterium, prevotella. Here we can see classification of osteomyelitis of the jaws. And of course, we could distinguish suppurative osteomyelitis and non-suppurative osteomyelitis. Among suppurative osteomyelitis, we have acute suppurative osteomyelitis, we have chronic suppurative osteomyelitis, like primary no acute phase preceding and secondary follows acute phase, and infantile osteomyelitis. When we talk about non-separative osteomyelitis, we have diffuse sclerosis, osteomyelitis, and focal sclerosing, osteomyelitis, proliferative parasitis, parasitis ossificial, garis osteomyelitis, and osteoradionecrosis. The theory classification of osteomyelitis of the jaw, acute osteomyelitis, and then we have secondary chronic osteomyelitis. And of course, don't forget about primary chronic osteomyelitis. Imaging techniques that we can use when we doing some examination, right? 
of our patient with ostomy virus. So we could use conventional radiographs. We can use radionuclide imaging or scintigraphy. We could use computer tomography. And of course, we can use magnetic resonance imaging. Conventional radiographs, mold eating appearance, enlargement of medullary spaces, and we can see destruction and replacement with granulation tissue. Sequestra with evidence of a trabecular pattern in marrow spaces, a shelf of newborn, we call that involucrum, often is found separated from the sequestra by a zone of radiolucency. Here you can see the examples of computer tomography images that we can use in our clinical examination. And on the lower picture, you can see the example of scintigraphy imaging of jaw. Acute superative stimulitis or acute intramedullary stimulitis characterized by deep, intense pain, high intermittent fever, paresthesia of the lower lip, and a clearly identifiable cause. Minimal swelling and fistulas are not present. On imaging, we can use conventional radiography, but it's not much use because you can see almost nothing. I mean, no changes at all. Radionuclide scan, it could be positive. Lab investigation, uh, generally negative, slightly cocytosis. And treatment includes immediate antibiotic therapy and identification and correction of immunocompromising conditions. Subacute superative osteomyelitis we could see from 10 to 14 days after onset of acute superative osteomyelitis. Clinical features. We have, not not we, our patient complains on deep pain, malaise, fever, and anorexia, teeth begin to loosen, sensitive to percussion, pus exudes around the gingival sulcus and throat mucosal, fetid odor, firm cellulitis of the cheek, expansion of the bone from increased periosteal activity, abscess formation, Prismus is not always present in regional lymphadenopathy. The patient's temperature may reach 37 to 38 Celsius, of course, and the patient often is dehydrated. Chronic stimulitis. We have two subtypes. It could be primary or it could be secondary. In secondary chronic osteomyelitis, the type observed in incompletely treated acute osteomyelitis. The clinical findings usually are limited to fistulas, and duration of soft tissues, and a thickened of wooden character to the affected area with pain and tenderness on palpation. Conventional radiographs, bone changes, study from 4 to 14 days. Full extent of bone dissolution we can see after three weeks and um, 30, 60 bone destruct percent of bone destruction is necessary. Here you can see the moth eaten appearance and eyelid pattern. Scintigraphy imaging. You can see here the examples of that. Yeah, so we have a scintigraphy imaging of 
In upper picture and on the lower picture, we have a computer tomography and magnetic resonance imaging. Of course, you can use just one of those imaging, but if you have opportunity to use few research image research, yes, yeah, so you can you can use a computer tomography and magnetic resonance imaging. Why not? It gives more mm, more view. Treatment modalities. So, which is the principles of treatment? It is evacuation and correction of host defenses, gram staining and culture and sensitivity testing, imaging to rule out bone tumors, empirical administration of gram stain gradient antibiotics. Removal of flus, teeth, and sequestra. Prescription of culture graded antibiotic therapy, repeated cultures. Positive replacement of irrigation drains, and of course, antibiotic beds. Sequestrectomy, debridement, decortication, resection, or reconstruction. Management, we have a conservative management or medical management, and of course, we have surgical management. If we talk about conservative management, we have complete bed rest, supportive therapy like nutritional support, and rehydration, blood transfusion, and control of pain. When we talk about surgical management, we have anti antibiotic therapy, systemic antibiotics and local antibiotic, closed wound irrigation, it means suction, right? Antibiotic impregnated beds and hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Then, um, as surgical itself, it's extraction of offending teeth, incision and drainage, sequestrectomy, sotherization, decortication, resection and reconstruction, and of course, post operative care. Conservative management, antibiotic treatment. We have regime one, it's hospitalizing, medically compromising patient. Or you can use different antibiotics. Here, as an example, you can, you can use penicillin, clindamycin, or cefoxidine. It depends. Mostly it depends on your, on your experience, like like if you have a positive cases, when you use some some of those antibiotics, you can use it. For penicillin allergic patient, we can use clindamycin and cefoxidine. And um, region two is for our patient treatment. You can see that we have penicillin and metronidazole here that we taking not now we are patient taking orally for two four weeks after last sequestrum removed in patients without symptoms closed wound irrigation technique tubes three four millimeters in diameter six ten inches in length Nilsparin irrigant, advantages, high dose of antibiotics locally, in no side effects. Disadvantages, labor intense, time consuming. Antibiotic impregnated bits. Technique, tobramycin or gentamicin. Indications, chronically infected bone associated with fractures. Refractory to systemic antibiotics. Advantages to deliver high concentrations of antibiotics, low systemic concentrations, thus low toxicity. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy involves 
intermittent, usually daily inhalation of 100% humidified oxygen under pressure greater than one absolute atmosphere pressure. Each session or dive is 90 minutes in length. Treatment given five days per week, twice daily for 30 days. 60 or more dives at 2.4 ATA for 90 minutes while breathing. Sequestrectomy, removal of sequestrum. Sequester means dead necrotic bone. Feet of sequestra, it may get infected and form a chronic infective focus. May remain dormant with no changes in it. May get revascularized and healing takes place may get resorbed completely. Antibiotics will not be able to penetrate into it. Sulcerization, removal of bony hollow cavity or dead space. After removal of sequestrum, a hollow cavity dead space occurs, a large clot forming the cavity, the clot will most likely to get infected, so the margin of the bone which Lotion sequestra are trimmed down. This create a saucer shaped defect instead of deep hollow cavity. This saucer shaped defect can't accumulate a large clot. Decortication, removal of chronically infected cortex of bone. The lateral and inferior border cortex is removed one two centimeters beyond the affected area, providing access to medullary cavity. Cancellous bone is removed till the uninvolved area, or bleeding points. Resection and reconstruction. All the above procedures are not effective completely eliminating the infective process. Once the part of the jaw is resected, it may be reconstructed using old logos, bone graft, or reconstruction plates. Here you can see the examples of that surgery. So mostly it's uh, titanium that we can use to reconstruct the bone. Or of course you can use uh, another bone, the patient bone means, right? Infantile osteomyelitis, seen a few weeks after birth and usually involves maxilla, occur via hematogenous root or from perinatal trauma of the oral mucosa from the obstetrician's finger or the mucosal suction bulb used to clear the airway immediately after birth. Infections involving the maxillary sinus and infected human have also been implicated as sources of infant infection. Clinical findings, extra orally, periorbital cellulitis, then we can see irritability and malaise, which are followed by hyperexemia, anorexia and dehydration. Convulsions and vomiting may occur intraorally, Maxilla on the affected side is swollen both buccally and palately, especially in the molar region. Fluctuance is often present and fistulas may exist in the alveolar mucosa. Leucocytosis is generally present. Treatment Intravenous antibiotics, drainage of the all abscesses, and sequestrectomy, of course, conservative approach. Danger of damage to tooth buds. Antibiotics should be continued orally for two to four weeks after all signs of infection have subsided. And of course, we use supportive care. 
non-separative osteomyelitis, chronic sclerosing osteomyelitis. It could be focal and it could be diffuse. It has other names such as sclerosing osteitis, multiple anastasis, local bone sclerosis, ossifying osteomyelitis, sclerosing cementoma, giantiform cementoma, sclerotic cemental masses of jaws. Chronic focal sclerosing osteomyelitis it is an unusual reaction of bone to infection occurring in instances of extremely high tissue resistance or in cases of a low-grade infection. Young persons belong 20 years more into that problem and tooth most commonly involved at first molar. Treatment consists of endodontic therapy or extraction of involved tooth, following which the bone elation may remodel or remain distinct. Chronic diffuse sclerosing osteomyelitis shows a proliferative reaction of bone to low-grade infection. Here, the portal of entry of infection is mainly through the periodontium. More common in females is of insidious in nature. On occasion results in mild separation and formation of fistulas to establish drainage. In such cases, patients might complain of wage pain and bad taste. Treatment consists with removal of source of infection, repeated culture and sensitivity testing high doses of antibiotics for prolonged periods, wound irrigation, antibiotic impregnated beds, and debridement, decortication or resection, and reconstruction, and of course, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Young race, osteomyelitis, or periosteitis, a significance. First described by Carl Garret as a focal gross thickening of the periosteum of long bones with peripheral reactive bone formation re resulting from mild irrigation or infection. A localized hard non tender swelling over the mandible seen primarily in children and young adults. It is commonly associated with a carrier smaller, usually the four smaller, and the history of past toothache. Osteomyelitis due to non-pyogenic organisms. Actinomycotic osteomyelitis. It is a chronic infection manifests both with granulomatose and superative features involving soft tissues and bone cervicofacial region. It is caused by tinomycosis is of endogenous origin. Pathogenesis organisms gain entry into soft tissue when established. Infection spreads and typically appears on cutaneous rather than mucosal surface. Actinomycotic osteomyelitis of jaws are rare but may present as a periosteitis as a result of the involvement of the adjacent soft tissue. An actinomycotic osteomyelitis in which the mandible is thickened woody heart swelling. Eventually, sequestration of the bone occurs, a chronic infection of a fracture of the, of the jaw bone and produce a chronic fistula. 
diagnosis is by microscopic examination of the purse when we can see sulfur granules. Tuberculosostimulitis. Mycobacterium tuberculosis is usually brought about by hematogenous spread. Ethiopathogens is Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Three possible methods of inoculation of bacteria into bone is direct inoculation of bacilli into oral mucosa through an ulcer or brac in the continuity of the mucosa spread to bone via an extraction of socket or an affected fracture line hematogenous or lymphatic spread from primary focus elsewhere in body surgical treatment is positive for acid fast bacillus that indicates tuberculosis disease patients started anti coach regimen after six to eight weeks the lesion is reviewed both clinically and radiographically to evaluate the need of surgical debridement. Negative for acid fast bacillus, complete excisional biopsy and debridement of tissue is done, then tissue is sent for histopathological studies. And of course, we have a long term follow up. Then we could talk about osteoradionecrosis. Osteoradionecrosis is a chronic non-healing wound caused by hypoxia, hypocellularity and hypovascularity of irradiated tissue. Definitions. Um, it, we, we can be, you we can use both, but there is a there is a, a definition by Marx and by Hutchinson. So, first definition by Marx: osteoradionecrosis is an area greater than one centimeter of exposed area of bone in a field of irradiation that has failed to show any evidence of healing for at least six months. About definition by Hutchinson is an area of exposed bone, mostly mandible, present for longer than two months in a previously irradiated field in the absence of recurrent tumor. Incidence. Incidence of involvement of mandible range from two to three percent. Extraction of tooth cause causes also radionecrosis is in 60-89% of cases. Time period between radiotherapy and development of also radionecrosis has been reported as a mean of 7.5 till 20 years. Here you can see the result or the examples of osteoradionecrosis that we can see on x-ray and on orthopon tomography. Pathophysiology. Radiation to the jaw is excess of 50 grade per hour. Kill bone cells and then we have progressive obliterating arthritis. Aseptic necrosis of bone, then we have bone tissues become hypovascular, hypocellular, and hypoxic. And then breakdown occurs from minor injury to the tissue, as the tissues cannot maintain normal cellular turnover and collagen synthesis. Here you can see the schema of that process. As a result, we have disturbance of our DNA. It means of patient DNA, of course. Radiation effects at various levels. We have three 
level. So it's cellular, tissue level, and organ level. So on cellular level, the cell may undergo one of the following changes. Cell may die, it may repair its DNA to survive with impaired function. And version C may repair DNA damage and function normally. On tissue level, changes are seen as endothelial death. Hyalination and thrombosis of vessels. The fibrosis of marrow takes place. Mucosa and skin undergoes fibrosis due to marked decrease in cellularity and vascularity of connective tissue. On the organ level, it is seen as a composite tissue which is hypoxic, hypocellular and hypovascular when compared to normal surrounding tissue. This is referred as 3H principle of radio necrosis. So we have three types of radio necrosis. Type 1 develops shortly after radiation is due to synergistic effects of surgical trauma and radiation closely coupled in time. Type 2 develops years after radiation and follows a traumatic event rarely occurs before two years after treatment, most commonly occurs after six years due to positive endarteritis and vascular occlusion of the nutrient vessels in the bone. Type 3, we could call it spontaneous ulcerative necrosis, occurs spontaneously without a preceding traumatic event usually occurs between six months and three years after radiation due to immediate cellular damage and death due to radiation treatment. This occurs when the radiation dose exceeds 7,000 rads or the fraction doses are greater than 200 rads per day. Clinical features. Early osteoradial necrosis may be asymptomatic, even through the, its main features of exposed, tibitalized bone through ulcerated mucosa or skin can be seen clearly. Pain is a common symptom and some patients have presented with intractable pain. Other associated symptoms include dysesthesia, halitosis, dysgeusia, and food impaction in the area of exposed sequestra. In severe cases, patients can present with fistulation from the oral mucosa or skin, complete devitalization of bone and pathological fractures. Management. Initial treatment is directed at controlling frank infection, administration of parenteral antibiotics and fluids, gentle irrigation of the soft tissues margins is useful in removing debris and reducing inflammation. Culture for sensitivity testing, fistula present, Supportive treatment it means good diet here. Conservative treatment includes indicated initially irrigation of the exposed bone, mechanical debridement, medicated park, repeated until sequestration occurs or bone is, is penetrated by granulation tissue. Ultrasound therapy 
neovascularity and neocellularity. It means we have as a result bone resection, not candidates for extensive treatment and hyperbaric oxygen therapy. 100% cases, 2.4 absolute atmosphere pressure, 90 minute session, and five days a week. One of the protocols that we could use, proposed by Mark's University of Miami, stage one, hyperbaric oxygenation session. If softening of the exposed bone results, the wound is the breedment, and 10 more oxygen session are provided. On stage two, non-continuity resection of exposed bone, bleeding margins, followed by 10 hyperbaric oxygenation sessions. If the tissue heals completely with no exposed bone, the patient is considered a stage two responder. Stage three, continuity resection and 10 postoperative session of hyperbaric oxygenation and reconstruction after three months. It means reconstruction of the bone tissues. Hyperbaric oxygen is effective in treatment of osteomyelitis because hyperbaric oxygen enhances lysosomal degradation. The oxygen free radicals are formed, which are toxic to anaerobic pathogens. The elevated partial pressure of oxygen created inactivate the exotoxins released by the pathogens. The tissue oxygen level is elevated, which enhances the healing. It helps in neoangiogenesis by encouraging endothelial proliferation. Um, very interesting version of osteoradionecrosis is bifosphonate related osteoradionecrosis of jaws can be described as an area of bone in the jaw that has died and been exposed in the month for more than eight weeks in a person taking any bifosphonate. Exposed bone shows no inflammation. Then we have stages with painful exposed areas of bone, and then we have advanced stages. Here you can see staging classification and clinical manifestation, and of course, a treat treatment that we could use for any of that stages. New protocols for prevention and tre treatment of osteoidal necrosis is Pentaxephaline is a methylxanthine derivative that expert an anti-TNF effect, increases erythrocyte flexibility, delights blood vessels, inhibits inflammatory reaction in vivo, inhibits proliferation of human dermal fibroblasts at the production of extracellular matrix and increases collagenous activity in vitro. And of course, I should say thank you for your absolutely stunning attention here. Wish you best of luck and see you soon.